We're in Edinburgh! The reason I'm back up in my home city is because I've been given an unmissable opportunity. So many petrol heads regret selling their first car. And I imagine many of you watching this right now wish you could have your first car back in your life. Well, through a weird twist of fate, I'm going to do exactly that. It's weird how life works. I was driving home from London to Edinburgh and I got to the outskirts of Edinburgh and came across a military barracks. And I looked into the car park and I saw a car and I thought, oh, I used to have one of them in that color as well. And then I saw the body kit and I thought, oh, I fitted a very similar body kit to my car, that's cool. And then I clocked the reg and it was my car. It was my first car, sadly, sitting abandoned in this car park. It had clearly been there for numerous years, rotting away, paint fading, flat tires, it was not in a great shape. But I filmed a video for my own channel, Mike Drive Tribe, and my audience went crazy for it, saying that you have to rescue that car. So we're back up in Edinburgh to rescue the car. This is such a weird feeling. I don't know whether to feel happy or sad about this, to be honest, because this was my first car, my first piece of motoring, getting that freedom to go out when I was 17, but to see it in this state now, I don't know whether you should kind of leave this stuff behind or whether you should crack on, embrace this amazing coincidence and get it back on the road. But I mean, looking at the front, the tires are shredded. You can literally see the threads. They're almost slick. They're both completely flat. The paint's completely faded. I haven't actually introduced the car. This is a Rover 25. It's a 2001 car. And basically at the time when I was a teenager, there was also the MG ZR, which was basically just a fancy Rover 25. But I wanted all those MG bits on it. So I started putting them on the car. This is the MG ZR rear wing. I've got the MG ZR tailgate, the bumper. I've got the MG wheels on it. There used to be a ZR badge on the back, but someone's either stolen it or it's just been flicked off. But the sun has actually damaged ZR into the paint. So it's quite cool to still see that. SG51 HEU, my first car when I was 17. The sun has laid waste to pretty much all of the body. It used to be a stunning red, solar red, but now it's pretty badly damaged. This car will need a full respray, but it's gonna get it at Mad Ford. It's gonna be a mint Rover 25 once we're finished. I wonder what this car smells like inside. From what I know, it's been here for at least three to five years and has not moved. So I imagine it's a bit moldy, but still nostalgic, nostalgic moldiness. So how did my little Rover end up abandoned here then? Well, it seems to have been sold twice since I let it go and ended up in the hands of a soldier who was periodically touring in Afghanistan, hence the car's current resting place outside of this barracks. Thankfully, he was okay with being on camera to explain everything. So welcome to the channel, Lance Corporal Chris Ferguson. So Chris, this was my first car. Am I right in saying it was yours as well? Yeah, this is my first car. Um, so I used this um, as just a, a workhorse, basically to travel backwards and forwards to, to work. Um, I used it maybe six months uh, at the most. Um, and then as I was coming into to camp, for the last time I used it, um, the clutch went in the car, so I had to free roll it. Um, and it's been sat here ever since, been pretty much abandoned for the last couple of years. Okay, so you work at the barracks, so you're a soldier? I do, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so I've been in the military for coming up seven years now, a Lance Corporal. Cool. Um, I've just come back uh, recently from serving on tour in Afghanistan. Um, so I've come back to 
to go on course um, and to, to deal with this. Okay, well, thank you so much for giving me back the car. I can't tell you how much that means to me. And trust me, the guys at Mad Ford are going to make this car better than new. So thank you so much for making it happen. Yeah, well, good luck. There's the, there's the keys. Thank you very much. Yep, good this luck. Means a lot. Okay, it's been a while, so the central locking definitely isn't going to work. So. Now, I remember the smell of this car. It had a very distinct smell to it. It was a nice one. Something to do with the seat. Okay, that smell is still there, but it's mixed with mold. <laughs> the interior, I don't know if you can see all this, it's definitely got organisms growing throughout it. But that's what you'd expect after three to five years, basically sitting on top of a lawn. It doesn't look too bad in here though. A quick wash here and there will get it basically back to how it was when I was driving it. MG seat, took all the roller seats out, so half leather MG seat. Okay, the next check is under the bonnet. I'm slightly scared for this one, but let's take a look. I don't really know what to expect here. Funny how your muscle memory takes you to exactly where you knew it was. Okay, first impressions. Just a lot of cobwebs, but actually looks okay. Engine, the intake, the battery, actually looks in okay condition considering how long it's been lying here. Something has nested on the gearbox. I don't know whether that's a bird or a mouse or something. There's spiders everywhere, but kind of similar to the interior. It just needs a bit of a clean up and then it's not actually too bad. But that's just my amateur opinion. So you'll never guess who I've brought to Scotland with me. Mick. Hello, Mike. Welcome to Scotland. Thank you very much, sir. I'm sorry it's not a Ford, but what do you think of my Rover? It looks good, Mike. I am <laughs> absolutely shocked, to be fair, apart from the cobwebs. Mm -hmm. It looks all complete, uh, nothing messed around with. Um, yeah. First in, uh, impressions look really, really good. the car wrestled kicking and screaming away from its spot, it was time to drive back down the country to get it to the workshop. We've got the Rover down to Mad Ford. Let's have a look underneath. So we know it has sat for at least three years, possibly five, absorbing Scottish rain. Let's have a look at it. So that's my 1.4 litre K-series engine up there, little five-speed box. One of the final mods I did to the car was put a big bore exhaust on it. And the previous owner has definitely resorted back to the original Rover 25 exhaust, which is a shame because it made a pretty good noise. Looking at the front wheels, the front tires, down to the threads, basically slicks. The previous owner was definitely ragging this car, which is a bit of a shame, but it is a bit of a boy racer car, I guess. To be honest, it doesn't actually look too bad. The Mondeo, I think, actually looked worse. Maybe that's down to the salt on the roads, it actually being driven about. But I think all of the rust, it looks pretty crusty, but I think it's all just surface so it should be able to be blasted off and then it might come out looking all good. I'm not the expert though, so let's get Mick in and see what he thinks. Hi Mike. Mick, I need your eyes, here's the light. Tell me what you see. Okay, well, instantly I see a lot of rust, obviously from standing, where we know it's been stood in the car park for years. Mm -hmm. um, it looks all intact, it looks all there. I can't see any massive amounts of uh, holes or bits of 
things missing or anything like that. It does look actually quite complete. Yes, very crusty, but I think nothing that a good sandblast and powder coating won't uh, won't sort, to be honest. So if you were expecting holes, they'd be what, at the front here? I would expect sills, inner closing panels at the back, yeah. outer sills. We've got a little bit of corrosion on the sills, but nothing, nothing to speak of. In actual fact, what you said about your, your Mondeo is correct. That was far worse. Okay, so yeah, it looks a bit crusty, but once you've got rid of all that, there should be some solid metal underneath. Well, what we intend to do is, as we did with the, the Mondeo, take it down to a, a shell, and we'll actually have this body shell sandblasted, so we can work from basically from nothing and, uh, and cure all the problems you know, straight away. Perfect. I think what we should do now, before we go any further, let's do, will it start? After three years in a Scottish car park? Yes, sir. You confident? Absolutely. Okay, let's give it a go. Okay. Okay, Mike, so with the vehicle being stood for so long, there are a number of checks we need to do before we attempt to start the car. So one of them, oil. Yes, it's got oil, so we give it a little wipe. Okay. Drop it back in. Looks good. I always like to do a little sniff, checking for fuel or anything like that. There's no moisture in there, so that's good. What does the colour of that tell you? It hasn't been changed for a while. Okay, then we check for, as the K-Series renowned for head gaskets. No cappuccino in there, no build-up. Very clean, which is a good sign. Coolant, we can see there's some coolant in the header tank, so that's good. Just check the airbox, Mike, make sure there's nothing living inside the airbox. Filter looks good. Yeah, yeah. Not bad at all, considering it's uh, it's been stood. Now we know the battery is toast, so our next thing to do is put a fresh battery on. Okay. And um, we'll give her a crank. Great stuff. Okay, Mike, so when you turn the ignition on, you should see a battery symbol and yep. an oil symbol. If it starts, you need to make sure that both of those go out. Okay. Okay. And shout if they don't. Turn it off if they don't. Yep. So in your own time, mate. Okay. Go on. Go on. Okay, give it a minute. It sounds it's like it close. wants to. Oh, 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 oh. Well, Let me have a go with the throttle. Revy little engine. What a little beauty of a car. We've smoked out the workshop, but that took what? Three goes Mick and then fired straight up. What a little car. Fantastic to hear that K Series again. I cannot wait to have this car back on the road. What a thing. What a feeling hearing my first car start up again, considering the state we found it in. It sounds like it's only running on three out of the four cylinders, but we'll get there. This restoration would not have been possible without the sponsors of this series, Liquid Molly. They've partnered with us on loads of really cool content on the channel so far, and when they heard the story of my Rover, they wanted to help out. So they'll be providing all the liquids going back into the car once we're over the hill and on the other side of the restoration, making sure that all the best lubricants, coolants, and additives on the market get into that car. Now, if you would like to know what products Liquid Molly provides for your car, click the link in the description below and punch your registration into the search function. You may not be doing a full restoration like us, but it's always good to refresh the liquids in your car as and when it makes sense. So click the link 
and get browsing. Pretty much everything has been disconnected. Three bolts to go. Mick, may I do the honours? Absolutely. It's amazing how miniature this thing is compared to the Mondeo's V6. Yes. It looks tiny and an animal's definitely had offspring on my gearbox. Doesn't look too bad though. No, it looks really, really good con considering. So you, this will be totally refreshed? That's yes, totally stripped. We'll go through everything um, and do what we do. Vapor blast, powder coat, replace, repair as necessary. Let's make it a, a really fresh engine for the new owner. Very nice. So I was talking to Rover Joe, a guy on my Twitch stream oh, earlier, yeah. and he explained to me how uh, Rover limited the power of the 1.4 K-series. Why did they need to limit the power? I don't really know. <laughs> but the way they did it was through actually limiting the amount of throttle flap opening in the, in the inlet. So instead of that thro throttle disc actually opening completely open, barely open. it was barely open. Is there anything we can do about that to get it fully open? Not really, because that will mess with the rest of the mapping. It hasn't been mapped for full throttle. Imagine the engineers designed this engine, gone through all that hardship, and then that's how they essentially map it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, crazy really. So we can't just sort of cut the spring there and put a new one in and no, have it coming if right we, around? If we, if we add more air, there won't be a fuel map. To, cut, to compensate for that extra air. That could be another 50 horsepower, yes, easy. It could. Just like we did with the Mondeo, Mix put together this wheelie contraption so we can move the car to the other side of the workshop and take off the main body panels and the interior. What's really interesting is how symmetrical the corrosion is. We've got this little section here and then this bit here. And if you come around the other side of the car, it's actually much worse, but it's in the exact same spot there and there. So it shows that there's just a weakness into where water can get into on this car. And imagine every single car has got a spot of weakness that if you give it the time and the amount of water it needs to corrode, it will do it. But That'll all be fixed by Mick in a few months. As ever, at the end of an episode one at Mad Ford Engineering, a car is completely stripped down to its bare bones. It's amazing some of the memories that have come back while we've been dismantling this car. Those half leather seats, I remember having to buy a special Torx head just to get those seats in and I felt like a professional mechanic once I was done with it. That MG X Power badge, X Power was the AMG or RS of MG at the time, so I slapped that badge on the car just to make me feel good about myself. It's been a pretty unbelievable coincidence that I came across the car. It just so happened to be abandoned where it was and I just so happened to drive past and see it. But my mum always says to me, what's for you won't go by you. And this is basically the perfect example of that. I was meant to find the car and now we are meant to restore it. So the plan is to fully restore the car back to as it was when I was a 17 year old, a perfectly stock Rover 25. And then we're gonna put it up for auction on eBay and the proceeds will then go to a military charity. Chris, the guy who owned the car and has given it back to me to make all this happen, is a soldier himself. And then the guys at Glencore's Barracks were amazing letting us film there, showing us rescuing the car. So I think it's fitting that the money goes to the military. I would like to hear from you guys though. 
What was your first car? I bet you guys have some awesome stories, so get them in the comments and I will definitely read them. I've been Mike, and don't forget to subscribe to Drive Tribe.